So you guys saw the title and yes, I finally got Stop Motion Studio Pro. <laughs> I should have done this a long time ago because it's only $5, but I finally got it. And today I'm gonna be going over the differences between Stop Motion Studio Pro and Stop Motion Studio to give you an idea if Stop Motion Studio Pro is worth the $5 over the free version, which is Stop Motion Studio. So first thing, the homepage is pretty much exactly the same. You can just start a new movie by clicking on new movie, like always. And then, oh, here we go. So first thing that I wanna address is that there is green screen, as you can tell. This is actually really handy, but it also doesn't really work perfectly. We'll get to that in a little bit, but first let's go to the main camera. The main camera is exactly the same. It's the automatic camera, and you can also go between the three modes and a zoom. And that's all pretty much standard with Stop Motion Studio and Stop Motion Studio Pro, so nothing new there. Now if you go back to the cameras and go to manual camera, this is one of my favorite parts of the Stop Motion Studio Pro app because you now have access to white balance, focus, ISO, shutter speed, and zoom. This is a lot more helpful than just being able to tap for focus and zoom in and change the brightness. So this one you actually get more full manual control like you would on an actual professional DSLR. And another difference between Stop Motion Studio and Stop Motion Studio Pro is the remote camera. The remote camera basically allows you to use your phone as a remote for say an iPad or something like that. This can be really useful, but I just have one phone and I don't have a tablet or anything. So for me, this doesn't really help me that much. Now the last camera is the green screen and this is actually a really helpful one if you wanna get a quick green screen or a quick blue screen. Now it's not perfect and I don't have very good green screen materials so it doesn't really work that well for me but I'm sure if you have the correct green screen materials you can probably play around with it a little bit and find something that works for you. I did think it was kind of fun just to go pick like a really cool background like this galaxy and then go change it to blue and then you notice his pants are all of a sudden in the galaxy. So that's kind of cool. You can play around do different effects like this and you know you can replace the background using green. You can adjust the sensitivity. That's something that is really useful. But again I don't have the proper tools for this so I can't really show you this in too much detail and I can't really give you too much of a tutorial on this. Now let's turn the green screen off and let's go to the manual camera. Now in the manual camera mode, you can't tap for focus. So you do actually have to go to the focus and do it completely manually, I believe. And there we go. That looks pretty good. And let's take some frames. So we've taken quite a few frames. And again, I just wanna say right now that there is an onion skin over here on the left and that's the same as the standard app so you're not getting anything special here and you're also getting the grid which is again not different from the regular app you are also getting this little timer feature which i believe is in the free app so again it's not much difference but now let's go back to this edit page and this is really where a lot of the differences will start to show up. For example, you can add a title and credits now. You can add the speech bubbles, backgrounds, colors, all sorts of things that you can't add with the free version. You can add images and files from your camera if you wanna do it that way to make your own stop motion. And then in the settings, you have 4K and HQ, and those are both not in the free version. You have all these filters, which are not in the free version. That's kind of cool. And you have all these foregrounds, which are not in the free version. The aspect ratios are in the free version, so nothing new there. Fade in and fade outs in the free version, and the speeds in the free version too. So there's not much new there, but all the filters and the foregrounds, those are all new. And then once you tap on one of the frames, you can go to edit. And here's where a lot of the differences are too in the edit page. For example, you can now add a face, 
which you can't do with the free version. That's pretty cool. You have a background that you can add. You have little shapes. So say you wanna have like a comic effect, you could do that. You have text, which I believe all these things you do not have in the free version. So this is definitely a good reason to get the paid version. And you also have added drawing. So these are all really cool features that you have in the paid version that we don't have in the free version. So yeah, these are definitely some things that you will wanna keep in mind. If you don't need a lot of these cool fancy edit features, then I would go for the free version. But really, if you have $5 lying around, which most people do, then you should definitely get this because it does have a lot more features. So if you wanna download this app for yourself, I will provide a link in the description. I am not sponsored by Stop Motion Studio for this. So this is actually all my opinion, and th this is the app that I would recommend to you if you are starting out in stop motion. And for somebody like me, yeah, I would definitely pay the $5. It was worth it. I think the features that come for the $5 version actually should be a lot more than $5. At this point, I think talking about it anymore would be just rambling. So if you wanna subscribe, there'll be a subscribe link right here on the screen. And you can also check out some more tutorials about Stop Motion Studio and other stop motion tutorials. That's all for now, guys. And I'll see you next time on Learning Curve Tech.